News hot off the press. Quavo responded back to Chris Brown with a song entitled OHB. Academics just dropped it on his live platform less than an hour ago. So you know I had to run home and come drop this for you guys so that we can break it down and discuss what we think about this diss. Pussy nigga, pull up, crash, shot about your bay. Why you pussy? And if you know anything about Chris Brown, his click is called OHB. Let's get into this. Check it out. One of the things that stood out to me was the fact that Quavo said he messed up his bag when he punched Rihanna in the face. You been fucked your bag up when you punch Rihanna in the face. Essentially, Quavo is speaking facts because Chris Brown did have a lot of pushback from that, and he also had his career kind of put on hold and almost kiboshed. But everybody knows this now, so that's not really like a killer bar. But let's dig deeper into this and see what else he had to say. Quavo titling this track OHB, which is a direct diss to Chris Brown's click, which is original Hood Bosses. They're also the basketball team that Chris Brown runs that he tried to call Quavo out for the basketball games. You know, I heard y'all call some people last year. Yeah, he was scared. Quavo. Who's scared? <laughs> Quavo, bring your out of here again. I said it twice. <laughs> And Quavo decided to flip the name to his track to call it Overhold Bitch, which is OHB. So he's blatantly sending disrespectful shots at Chris Brown and his camp, letting them know that they could get it anytime they want to. On the response track that Chris Brown had dropped back to Quavo after Quavo's initial response, he had said that he wanted to punch Quavo in the face at Fashion Week when they were sat next to each other. And Quavo responded, you gonna punch who? Come punch me in my face. It's nothing to catch a fade letting Chris know that he's not scared to get down with him, which is, you know, I mean, hey, I hope it doesn't happen. I'll be honest. Unless it's going to be a boxing match. I'll take a Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney situation anytime because I know both of them can get up from it, no sweat off their backs, get their animosity off, and everything's good. Quavo also called him a little bitch and said, come dance with my Drake. Little bitch, come dance, battle with my Drake. And the Drake, you know, is a gun. So he's telling him that he's basically just a dancer and he's not worried about anything that he has popping. This one right here, a lot of people forgot about. He told him that his house got ran up in because he didn't pay some money that was owed and they tied up his auntie in the house. Niggas ran in your house, tied up your aunt cause she ain't paid. And it was also said that the people that broke in had the code to the safe. So it sounds like it could have been an inside job or do we not know what happened with that situation? Quavo makes it very clear that he tells Chris Brown not to mention takeoff, and he went even crazier by throwing takeoff on the hook. I did the paper coming to save you, but you gon' owe me pussy. And pulling out an unreleased takeoff verse for this disc. Dropping the diamond pillow, talking to these bitches at home. What's crazy and funny at the same time is Chris Brown heard this disc right away, and he already responded on his Instagram stories saying that this was Google raps and that it's trash and doesn't even need a response and that Takeoff is the better rapper, which I don't disagree with that. I think most people don't disagree with that. Quavo is more melodic. He's kind of like the future of the group, and he always does the hooks and the stylistic approach to the things. Takeoff and Offset are the ones that come harder with the bars. Quavo also says that CB is effed up about some coochie, still hung up on Karuchi. He's saying, get over it, bro. It's not that serious. It already happened. Neither one of them are still with Karuchi. So what is the whole point of beefing over this female that really doesn't care about neither one of them anymore? I get it for Chris Brown because he was with her for quite a while. I think it was about five years or something like that. But man, it's like, come on, guys. We're fighting over women. Don't we have anything bigger, more important to do than fight over a woman? From there, he also tells Chris that he tried to beat up Tiana Taylor and Usher stopped him. And this was at Usher's birthday when they got into an incident where Chris Brown was seen visibly mad at Tiana Taylor and Usher did step in and he almost got into a fight with Usher behind the situation. But whether or not he was going to beat up Tiana Taylor, that, you know, that's hearsay, that's speculation, we don't know. But we do know that the, the event happened and something transpired. Now here's one of my sticking points is it's always when it comes to, you know, disagreements with light skin versus brown skin, everybody always tries to do this divide. Oh, you just light skin or oh, you're dark skin or whatever. None of that's relevant. It don't divide no country, nothing like that. Everybody is part of the same camps. It's basically these two beefing is what it is. And I think what makes it so relevant to people as well is the fact that Drake is light skin, Kendrick's dark skin, Chris Brown's light skin, Quavo's dark skin. So it's just happening to line up where you have lighter versus darker. But this is over different things. This is over women. This is over, you know, rap beefs. This is over disses from 10 years. So the color doesn't really play into anything. Quavo also gets at him about Stomp the Yard. We step in the yard, you know how that ended? Saying that Stomp in the Yard, we know how that ended. 
because Chris Brown's character died in the first 10 minutes of that movie. Hey, this Christmas he is alive and well. So, you know, his acting career is sustained. He also addressed the fact that Chris Brown was talking about Sweetie and him bagging Sweetie, but Quavo said that he can take a model and make her Sweetie. I can take a model, bitch, and make a Sweetie, nigga. As if Sweetie is nothing special. Like, they're talking about this woman like she's just irrelevant to them. And I'm really just having to wonder what does she really just do to these guys or how does she keep, you know, doing these crazy things with these guys. Like, even when she was sitting on little Baby's lap. I, I don't know, but her name's getting dragged through the mud quite a bit with these guys. And I know she's probably not liking it too much. Also references Chris Brown again for drug use, calling him a crackheaded version of Michael Jackson. Bitch, crackhead Michael Jackson, bitch, you better beat it. Says the drugs are, you know, the issue. And it's like the, the drug use jokes are just not going to go away. People are always going to try and come at Chris Brown about using coke and whatever else he does. We have never seen him do it. Nobody has footage of him, Diddy's parties or, you know, anybody else's stuff to where they can say that this man did this. But, you know, it's always been that speculation because of his fluctuation in weight and, you know, just different sporadicness in his personality. But I think it's just Chris. I don't think anything's wrong with him. Back to the fighting aspect. Quavo says, can't believe I got to beat you about some women beef. Can't believe I gotta beat you by some women so he's saying that the women stuff is silly and that he doesn't really want to have to put hands on them based on the fact that they're arguing over some women and again neither one of them has got a ring on the woman's finger so what does it matter the beef for the women thing is just like throw it out chris Come on out and tell us if there's a real reason why this beef is happening besides Karuchi and Sweetie. I would love to hear what's causing this beef between you guys. Thanks, Flashers, for watching. That's me summing up the beef in a nutshell and telling you my thoughts and opinions. I honestly would feel like these guys, I love the music. Don't get me wrong. I'm all for it as long as it stays on track, like I've said before. I love that Takeoff got the hook and the verse in this. And it was, you know, take off talking with a more aggressive tone and spitting his, you know, spitting his ish like he normally does. But I'm like, okay, Quavo and take off, love it. Meagles all day. Chris Brown, love him all day. Make sure it stays on wax. Keep dropping the tracks. You know, things will get patched up sooner or later. OHB, Migos, QC, all of those guys, everybody should just be able to patch things up, get back to the music. And hopefully we have a strong summer with all the hit tracks that'll be coming out. And Academic seems to think that this one from Quavo is going to be a hit record. He felt like it was that strong. What do you guys think about the diss? Have you heard it yet? Am I just informing you for the first time? Let me know in the comments. See you guys on the next episode. I'll be coming back to you every time something pops up. Enjoy your day.